Aloha nui no yaka ko. Ah, nui ko mahalo ya Terry Skillman. Ah, nui ko mahalo ya Meliana uh, Lawa o Maile Mayer Kala ko kono ana mai yau. Um, with the with the, the direction, say what you want. Oh, I really like that. <clears throat> I also I think I I need to sort of say that that these next 15 minutes at least are uh, are for my grandmother Cecilia Kaihilani Kaavaloa Victor Cabral. And for my sons, um, Carl Richard Kamalui Kealoha Kaihilani and Elijah Mamea Mahiai Kalaiku Kaihilani. My grandmother is my Ike, and my sons are my Hana. And so I wish I were talking about Mele today, and maybe next time. <clears throat> but I want to tell a story about my childhood. Movie, really important to me. One of my favorite movies growing up was Karate Kid. You know this movie. It starred Ralph Macchio as a high school senior whose name was Daniel LaRusso in the movie. And he moved from Newark, New Jersey to LA with his mother into an apartment building at which worked a handyman, Okinawan immigrant, whose name was Keisuke Miyagi. Miyagi was, was played by our very own comedian, um, Pat Noriyuki Morita. Ah, Daniel's a sort of underdog of sorts, no friends. Uh, he has an accent indicative of his East Coast upbringing. He's at a brand new school. He has one hobby. He likes karate. Except that his process by which he gains knowledge in karate is not so traditional. He learns from books and a few classes at the Y. Well, in this movie, Daniel befriends Ali, a cheerleader from, from the high school. Ali has an ex-boyfriend. I know it's a perfect setup for Korean drama. <laughs> Ali has... Ali has an ex-boyfriend whose name is Johnny. And Johnny and his friends don't care much for Daniel. He's a brand new kid, you know, uh, underdog. And much less do they care for this budding relationship between Ali and Daniel. And so the other thing about this group of, of gentlemen is that they already fight for a karate, jo uh, karate dojo called Cobra Kai. And so sh long story short, uh, after a high school, uh, high school dance of some sort, Halloween dance of some sort, the guys gang up on Daniel. They corner him and they begin the process of um, beating him up. Well, out of nowhere comes Superman Miyagi. <laughs> All right? And in his haze, as he's lying on the, lying on the asphalt, you know, he, Daniel looks up and sees that Miyagi is saving him, rescuing him from these five hoodlums. Miyagi rescues him back to his home. The next morning, he wakes up and he's, Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi, was that you that saved me? Mr. Miyagi, hey. <laughs> please, Mr. Miyagi, please teach me. Teach me what you know. And so after sort of the requisite refusal period, Miyagi acquiesces, right? Um, Miyagi says, yes, I'll teach you two stipulations. One, you do what I ask you to do. Two, no question. Oh, he's a young kid. He's, he's excited about life. Somebody's going to teach him karate. Absolutely. Come to my house tomorrow morning. The next morning, he shows up. Miyagi has a beautiful home in, in the industrial district of LA. <clears throat> Daniel rides his bike onto the property. Miyagi comes out with two buckets full of water and a few sponges. First lesson, wash my car. Daniel looks at him, looks at the car, looks at him, looks at the car. Puts the pail on the ground, gets the sponge, and he starts right And Miyagi, ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> Specific technique. Wax on. Yeah, we all know this. Let's do this together. Wax on. Wax off. Ah, so Daniel is a little bit confused, but you know, he's excited. Something is, a, if this is the prerequisite for him to start learning karate, I'm going to do this. So, eight cars. Wax on. Wax off. He finishes. He's ready for his lesson. Miyagi says, good. Good job today. Come back tomorrow. Daniel is so confused. Next day he comes back. Miyagi says, next lesson for you, paint the fence. <laughs> Up. Oh, come on, come on. Up. Down. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel has to paint all the fence in the deck area of Miyagi's property. He's starting to get a little confused. At the end of the day, Miyagi says, good job. Come back tomorrow. Next day, Daniel comes. New lesson, sand the floor. Ready? Sand the floor. <laughs> the whole day, he spends the whole day sanding the deck of Miyagi's property. Well, he's starting to get really frustrated at this point. The next morning, he comes, Miyagi's not even there. There's a note on the, 
on the, on the side of the house with a few buckets of, of paint. And now Miyagi's saying, paint the whole house. I've gone fishing. <laughs> yeah? So we paint the house. Ready to go. Side to side. Now, Daniel is so infuriated at this point. When Miyagi comes home, he's had enough. He understands no questions, but he's, he's so sick of this. I asked you to teach me karate. You told me you were going to teach me karate. Why am I doing this laborious, mundane tasks for you, these chores for you? Miyagi, the ever sageful, ever wisdom filled, ever patient. Daniel san, show me wax the car. Show me wax the car. You know, show me paint the fence. And in this moment, this is the moment that I, uh, of the movie that I really want to unpack. It's really important for me, this moment in the movie. This is the, the moment which, for me, seals my really liking of this movie. In Hawaiian, we say, makahana kaike. Literally translated, makahana kaike means that in the doing is knowledge. This is a literal translation. It's an immediate translation of a proverb that has preceded all of our existence here in this place. My contention is, it's not the real translation of this proverb, makahana kaike. You see, translation is a, provides for us a diving board into a sea of potential. Our ability to interpret that potential is limited by our capacity to seek beyond the immediate. These pa this past week that Daniel is coming to Miyagi's house, he learns to wax the car. He learns to paint the fence. He learns to sand the floor. He learns to paint the house. His doing is these mundane tasks. But in this exchange between he and Miyagi at the end of this first week, something happens, some catalytic event happens, such that he can translate this literal task into something that is larger, a conceptual scape. So my question then is, how do we come to stop at the literal translation of makahana kaike. Little history, uh, history uh, a little bit of history. In 1500, in about 1500, the very early 16th century, the Western world had this gentleman by the name of Rene Descartes. We call him the father of modern philosophy. He was the first person really to challenge Greek thinking. And the way he challenged Greek thinking, the goal at the end of his day was to find pure truth. And the process by which he comes to pure truth is to negate everything. He doubts everything. Until he comes to the one statement, I doubt existence. And he realizes that in order to doubt existence, he must first exist. He realizes this is unrefutable truth, that I exist. And so he coins this phrase that all of us are so well versed in, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. Now, he takes this a step further. He says that the mind is an entity that is separate from the body. This is where I think Hawaiians would be all brought up. You saw out to lunch. The <laughs> mind is separate from the body. That the mind has pure potential to exist without the body. It's like a talking head on the dashboard of your car. Now, he doesn't, he's not without his naysayers, but it's, it's radical thought for the time. And it lasts for quite a, quite a long time. And so the constructivists. Constructivists are, are guys like Piaget, Vygotsky, these people that are interested in visceral activity. And they say the path to knowledge is through doing, physical activity, visceral action. A child learns to build a tower by playing with blocks. The challenge with them is they, they release the mind of its potential. They say that the mind is not important in the process of play. That imagination happens as a result of physical action. This is where Hawaiians say, oh, you guys are out to lunch. Makahana Kaike expects of us that we marry action with intellectual internalization. Only when action and intellectual internalization happen do we attain Ike. Ike then is not a point in time. It's processed through time. We are carrying our Bodhi tree with us everywhere we go. When our dear friend at Peli Ho Ofa uh, uh, publishes his text, Past to Remember, he brings to light this very important Hawaiian concept. And Hawaiians, after reading this, were like, um, duh. <laughs> but it's radical thinking in, in, in the world of the Western Academy. Peli Ho Ofa brings to light that Hawaiians view history 
as kava mamua, that is, the time before me. And we view the future as kava hoppe, the time behind me. What does this say? This says that I am firmly pl planted in the present, eyes on the past. I know what happened yesterday. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But if I encounter something tomorrow with which I'm not sure how to uh, contend, I only need to look at yesterday. My tutu has already done that work for me. In a sense, so much of the way I look at the world is because of how close I was to my grandmother. This woman and I were inseparable. Anything she asked me to do, I was there. And what it's caused for me is a need for every time I sit at the piano, for her to sit with me. Every time I sit at the piano, Uncle Mahi Beamer has to sit with me. Auntie Leila Kiaha, she has to sit with me. I know sometimes she don't want to sit with me, but she has to sit with me. This is the whole point about the way we look at our lives. Makahana Kaike tells us that we do but we do with our whole body, our whole mind. So that I am not a Hawaiian practitioner. I don't practice culture. I cannot ever check out of being Hawaiian. <laughs> I can check out of practicing the piano. Hawaiian is something that I am. It's something that I wake up being. It's something that I, I eat lunch being. It's something that I go to sleep being. Makahana Kaike reminds us that we have to marry the knowledge with the attainment of the knowledge and the process to attain that knowledge. Knowledge is not something that at the end of my PhD I will have. Knowledge is something that is given to me before I was born. In my na'au, in my, my, my core, in my soul, I am a teacher. And our verb for teaching and for learning in Hawaiian is the same. We're eating from the same poi bowl. The first lesson a teacher must learn in Hawaiian is that I have not lost the potential to be a student. And in that sense, my sons are just as much my teacher as my grandmother was. I am just as much a, a student of theirs as they are students of me. Makahana Kaiki is a marriage of the body and the mind. I wish Descartes and, and the constructivists talked to a Hawaiian before they came up with their philosophy. In closing, I'm so, so happy to be from Kailua on Oahu because Oahu seems to have so many beautiful people. Thank you, Manu. <laughs> Aloha. Yeah, 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 yeah.